Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. Today we are going to play around with Poker Snowy a bit. Poker Snowy is a poker, I guess you can call it a training application, where you can play against bots, you can submit your hands to its algorithm and see if it thinks you are playing well, etc. Today we're going to play the challenge. So you click the challenge tab at the top of the page. I guess you can't really see it. Brings up this tab. I would like to play <clears throat> against five opponents, cash game. I want the players to rebuy. So we're playing like a hundred big blind cash games, real time evaluation. Let's open a table. So here's one table. Let's actually play two tables so that we don't sit here and waste our time. All right. So here we have two games and in some of the previous videos, I would look at what the game suggested and then make my decision. Today, we are just going to make my decision and see if I make any significant errors. So I'm just gonna play as I would typically play. And then we'll go through at the end and look for blunders and mistakes that I make. We'll defend the king nine offsuit and probably check fold the slot versus under the gun raiser. If you raise from a different position, I would definitely check call a flop. But in this spot, I think we can check fold. So check, check, flop, check, check, turn. I'm going to continue checking. Uh, maybe we should be betting the river. This is an interesting spot because you think you would bet an ace on the flop. He could easily have a king, which we chop versus. Um, I think I'm going to check this. And I think that's because I cannot be convinced the program is not going to bet with an ace on the flop. So I'm just going to check again. Look to check call. Um, I'm not sure we can get any value from hands like sevens, which is a hand that very easily could check and give up. So I'm okay with that. Here I'm going to use my limping strategy that I prefer. I've discussed my limping strategy a lot over at pokercoaching.com. There we do interactive webinars. And one of the questions was, what is your strategy from the small blind with 100 big blind stacks versus a good player in the big blind? And I think the answer is to limp a bunch. Here, I'm just going to bet one big line on the flop. I don't expect him to fold too often, but I think that the bluff will work often enough. Once we get raised, I'm just going to fold, though. All right, so here, this guy raises. Should we be three betting this? I think we should sometimes. If we do three bet, I think we want to pot it. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's pick the aggressive lines. Pick the aggressive lines over the tight lines. I'm a big fan of being aggressive in general because that's going to typically, at least versus real opponents, allow you to get paid off a little bit easier. If you play very tight, like if you have to pick between a tight, unexploitable strategy and then a very rigid, I'm sorry, tight, unexploitable strategy that is hard to play against, that's often going to lead to you not winning very many big pots because you're just not playing very many weak hands. But if you are getting in there and taking perhaps slightly negative EVE lines pre-flop, um, you'll find that you have a lot more plus EV post-flop spots versus at least real players, but maybe not against bots because bots may not care about image in the least bit. Here we're going to 3-bet. I'd make it 5.5 with most of my range in this spot. We'll defend 5-3 suited. Check fold the flop. Not a good flop. Fold to a pot size bet for sure. From early position, even 6-handed, you have to be somewhat snug. So player pots it, and we're in the big blind with ace-2 suited. I think we're just going to go ahead and 3-bet this. I think that's going to be better than calling. Well, that's a good flop. So this is where I really don't know what the program suggests. I imagine I should be betting, and I think I want to bet small my whole range. So I'm going to bet $8 here. I think the program should stick around a lot of the time. When I say the program, I mean the opponent. I think he should stick around a lot on these flops. So I'm going to bet the turn probably something like 8 no, Let's go 17 I would make the same play with aces, I think, um, with my bluffs. Maybe not. Maybe with ace of spades, king of something, I would bet again. Well, we get called down, so that's great. Now on the river, is there any justification for any play besides shoving? I think I would want to be shoving some of my bluffs. So given I want to shove some of my bluffs, I think I just need to shove here. Wow, king nine suited. Well, that's a setup. Um, king, ace jack offsuit. Should I three bet this or call? Let's go ahead and three bet. I think calling is also fine. Same strategy as earlier. I want to be limping a lot of hands. I'm just going to check this flop with middle pair. I don't think there's much value to be had in betting. Now we'll min bet turn, and we will bet again on river. Let's bet three on the river. I think we can call by a lot of sixes, fours, worse tens, etc. 
So I like that. All right, so here I three bet and I get four bet. I'm just gonna fold this. There may be some merit to jamming. If we think the player is gonna be overly aggressive with four bets, but I don't think the bot's overly aggressive with four bets. So I'm just gonna fold. Ace two offsuit in the cutoff. You can raise or fold this. I typically would just fold it. And I think the bot would also suggest fold. Seven, six suited, kind of a similar spot where you probably wanna fold this in general. Let's actually raise it though. It could say this is a mistake and I would not be shocked if it says this is a mistake. This again goes back to just being generally aggressive. And if you're gonna be generally aggressive, you at least wanna have hands that flop well enough. We'll defend ace eight suited, get a good flop. I could conceivably lead this flop. I think check raising is also pretty sweet. This is a board that should not hit too many players. I'm going to make it eight, given the opponent bets so small. Some people think whenever you should always make it three times whatever your opponent bets, but usually you want to be making a bet in proportion to the pot, not necessarily in proportion to the guy's bet size. Just usually people bet kind of normal. It is proportion to the guy's bet size and proportional to the guy's bet size, but here when he bets so small, you can make it a little bit bigger. So something like four or five X this bet. We'll just keep going. And that works. Here I raise under the gun and I get three bet from the small blind. Small blind players typically have very strong ranges when they three bet versus under the gun. <sighs> so I'm going to call this, but I could see folding being okay. Man, they just keep giving it to me on the flop. This is a great spot to go check, check. The only turn this bad is an ace. Opponent bets turn, we'll easily call. We obviously don't need to worry about timing tells versus a bot because it doesn't care. Um, I would be using different timing versus regular players. I'm going to raise the button over here. And now, do we bet the river? I think we do. And I think we want to bet kind of small. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's bet a little bit on the bigger side. I think if we bet something like 15, I think it'll still look me up with pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket tens. Obviously, we could be taking ourselves to value town here, meaning, you know, he could have a better king, but I, I think we need to bet. Our hand's going to be best almost every time. We get led into on this flop. I don't really know what the program's leading with. I'd be interested to know, but we're just going to fold. We'll pot three bets. There are the queen 10 off suit. Five, four off suit. Again, you probably want to four better fold this. I'm just going to fold. Jack 10 off suit under the gun is not a playable hand. You just need to be kind of tight. One thing I would really like to experiment with in this is I would like the program to throw out abnormal situations that I would very rarely expect to encounter. Like I would like to see it min betting sometimes or betting huge sometimes. I think that would allow me to test myself a little bit better because whenever the program just plays kind of straightforward or, you know, when all the players play the same, it doesn't really teach you to play against people who do mix it up in various ways. And of course, I'd like the program to play somewhat balanced in various ways, but I think that would be a good way to make the program a better learning tool. Anyway, I uh, three bet this, check the flop, pretty bad turn, was gonna continue checking and it pots it, wow. All right, so I check the flop because if I bet and get called, I'm usually not loving it. When it goes check, check, I am loving it. Turns a king and the opponent pots it. I'm gonna call here, I don't really see how I can fold. We're praying for him to check the river. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised it didn't bluff that river with six, five suited. Um, give me add the nut low. I think the opponent probably wants to have some bluffs in his range. So I'm a little bit surprised it did not bluff with that one. I guess it has no blockers. Maybe it's trying to bluff with blocker hands instead. Like it may be more inclined to bluff with stuff like queen high is there than six high. Because neither of them win at showdown, but queen high wins. Our queen high has blockers to me having straights. So maybe it picks those hands as bluffs. We're going to check call this. I don't think there's any point in raising. Pretty bad turn. We will continue calling though. And on the river, we'll just keep checking. And we'll call a tiny bet. Interesting tiny bet on the river. I don't know why the program did not bet bigger. And I don't know why it did not bet the turn. So I'm a little bit surprised at that. All right, implementing same small blind limping strategy. We'll just limp bet the flop. I think you want to continue betting on a lot of turns whenever the board changes a decent amount. Um, the opponent should be folding a lot of sixes and fives at this point, or at least consider folding sixes and fives. And I would have definitely continued betting the river if I did not get raised. All right, queen jack suited over here. Let's call and see a flop. Wow, I keep getting it. They keep giving me the nuts. It's going to be an easy game. 
Check call the flop. Opponent bet's tiny on the turn. This is a spot where I don't really love raising with the nuts, but given our opponent bet's so small, I think we should raise. And I actually think raising would be pretty nice here with all of my draws as well. And there are a lot of draws available. So I'm going to make it kind of big. Let's go 18. I think that's going to be a nice size that applies a lot of pressure and gets maximum value out of my opponent's strong hands when he has to, happens to have something like an overpair. Um, so I, I like that spot. I, I think that's a good spot to go for it. 10-8 suited. I think you should pretty much always fold. Let's actually see what the program suggests. I'm going to fold this, but we'll see if the, uh, three betting is perhaps better. As you see, a pot size three bet is just barely a losing play. You lose two cents or whatever it is. I'm not exactly sure how to read this EV chart over here, but you lose two cents by three betting. So it's not really that bad. Kind of interesting. If you're going to three bet, you want to make it pot and not half pot. Half pot, for example, is only to 475. Um, pot would be to 750. So if you are going to re raise, you want to make it big so that you have some fold equity. You always want to give your opponents a chance to fold. I don't really understand why the program varies its size pre-flop. I would be interested in reading some sort of a primer or some notes on that because clearly the program pots it sometimes, clearly it min raises sometimes, and knowing what it's doing in those spots would be very beneficial, I think. All right, so I raise the button. We are going to call the three-bet with king-jack suited. Opponent checks the flop. Jack two offsuit. I think we probably want to limp this one. Eh, who knows? We'll again do limp bet. Program does not fold to the limp min bet, which is interesting and telling. And here we're just going to continue blasting off. I think we want to go pot on the river to try to get it fold everything besides an ace. And it does fold, so that's good. Um, should we bet this? So here, I raise this guy three bet. I called it. Check the flop. I think we just need to check this. We have a pretty good amount of backdoor equity. If I bet and much money goes in the pot, I'm always beat. I think, but at the same time, I think I need to be willing to three barrel in this spot because it's very easy for our opponent to check call the flop with stuff like ace king and ace queen. I'm sorry, ace, ace king and ace jack that will fold later. So I think I'm just going to give up on that one. So opponent here, limp small blind, I check. And again, we're just going to continue betting off. Check call flop, check call turn. Will the opponent ever fold a six on the river? I mean, let's let's do the same thing. Let's just give it a try. So I like this. It's interesting to see the program is folded twice in that spot where it clearly had something. It's like it just had stone air, right? So given it had something, maybe the program does not like facing bigger bet sizes. Here we'll call in position with pocket sevens. We do not flop the nuts. Opponent bet's 11 on the flop. Half pot, we will call with pocket sevens and see what develops. Usually folding on the turn. Well, that's obviously a good turn. So I think the plan was if the opponent checked the turn, I was going to make a small bet for value slash protection. Now that we have a set, that obviously goes out the window, but I think I'd still like to make a small bet to try to get value from various things. So I'm going to bet 13 here. We're not really trying to stack the opponent. We're more so just trying to get money in the pot. Now on the river, should we bet small or big? Obviously, the flush comes in on the river, but I don't think we're worried about that so much. I think the opponent's going to have a lot of marginal made hands, so I think we want to bet small. So let's bet 16. I do think that the program will check the nuts sometimes, looking to check raise, so we may get check shoved here. Um, so I'm not really sure what the right strategy is in that spot. That, that would be an interesting one to analyze. All right, 7-6 suited. This is another one where it's going to say you can 3-bet or fold. I'm going to fold. As you see, 3-betting to pot sometimes is neutral EV. You can balance it, so that's nice to know. And as you get smaller, it gets worse and worse. As you see, though, calling is particularly worse than call than re-raising or folding, and that's very important to know. I think a lot of people just call here trying to see a flop, and that's what the vast majority of small stakes amateur players do. They call and try to see a flop, and they think that's just good poker. And very often, if your opponents are good, you just want to be applying a lot of pressure. 10-5 offsuit will fold. We'll defend the jack. I mean, this actually could be a 3-bet. I'm not sure what to do in this spot. I'm going to defend, but I would not be shocked if it says we need to be 3-betting sometimes. And as you see, it actually has 3-bets particularly bad, so that's interesting. Small 3-bet's okay? Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. 
I don't understand this spot. Maybe we could check raise this one. We have some backdoor equity. Definitely want to be betting the turn now. And we're going to continue betting on uh, not this river. So this is an interesting river because now our opponent may be inclined to call with all pairs and all ace high. So I'm not going to bluff this one. I, I If we think we can make the opponent fold ace high, then bluffing becomes pretty great. But if we can't make the opponent fold ace high, well, then bluffing's terrible. And I think the opponent's going to have a lot of ace high here. So check, check, and he does have a pair. A little bit surprised he didn't go for thin value, but he didn't. All right, so we will be done after the next hands, and we will take a look at how I did. See if I made any gigantic errors. I feel pretty confident in this session. I don't think we had too many tough spots, and I don't think I did anything horrifically bad. But we'll see. Uh, pocket sixes. Let's go ahead and three bat. Let's see what the program suggests, though. It suggests call. It says call is a little bit better than potting it. So that's interesting. It suggests half pot could be okay. I don't really understand why half pot's okay, because you're going to get called pretty much every time. Now that I four bet's going to say fold every time. You just got to fold. As you see, all the other plays are not particularly good. All right. Do I really want to quit? Yes. Yes. All right. So we click on the import tab. Not too sure what this is. I want to select all the hands from today. So we have 9-9 nine, nine here. This is from 9-8, so that's yesterday. This is from 9-8, that's yesterday. There should be some more hands coming soon. So I'm going to pause this before we analyze them. All right, here we go. You had to wait about one minute for these hands to pop up. So whenever you're playing the program, again, you can actually sign up for a free trial of Poker Snow. You can get access to all these features at jonathanlittlepoker.com slash pokersnowy. I'll have a link on the page. So then we click import files. Oh, just cancel. We click, how do I do this? Import folder? No, we click view analysis. Let's do that. There we go. And let's see what it says. It said we played at a world-class level. I believe we're filtered. Let's see. We want to be filtered to today. Okay. So yeah, world-class level. Error details. Let's take a look at the errors. Blunders, as you see, we had no blunders, which is good. You don't want to be making blunders. So let's take a look at these hands. So this is going to bring up 15 hands where it says we made errors. So in this hand... It's saying I made a preflop play that was wrong. It says I should just fold or raise. So actually it says when opening the pot, it's best to play for either a raise or fold. Don't give the big blind player a chance to see the flop for free. Your hand is exactly borderline, therefore a raise is correct. Well, that's nice. These tips, that's fantastic. Um, I disagree versus good players because if you raise, they should call or three bet a lot. So I just disagree with this analysis, but yeah, we'll see. Um, so you sit in middle position with several players behind you. Therefore, you need to play tight. You need at least 10-9 suited to open in this spot. Okay, so it thinks that this raise is slightly bad. As you see, I actually mentioned it was slightly bad. And it loses us some tiny bit of money, which I, I think is fine. King Jack suited. It says fold. Wow. So as it, so then say, and this guy, what happened? I raised under the gun, small blind, three bet. And remember, I actually commented that in this hand... I think this guy is going to be three betting pretty tight. And I guess the program says it as well. And the program just says, this is a little bit loose. You should have folded. So as you see, folding is better than calling, which loses a small amount. Actually, not even a small amount, a pretty good amount. All right. Um, interesting, it says I should just fold. Queen 10 offsuit to an initial preflop raise. As you see, my three bet lost some tiny amount. I potted it here. We lost three cents. Here, button raises. I decide to three bet the ace five, ace four offsuit. It says we should just fold. A little bit surprised at this one. Um, button should be opening pretty wide. You know, one thing that's very different whenever you're playing against the bot is that a lot of players, and particularly live poker, are opening way too loose on the button. So I'm a little bit more inclined to attack them. Again, this is a spot where I'm limping a lot of the hands. It does not like limping, but I'm I'm not very convinced that raising or folding is going to be much better. In today's game, at least. Maybe the program has very good strategies for defending versus lamps. I'm not really sure. Here I three bet again and notice it's just a tiny loser. 
Here I did the limping strategy from small blind. Here I three bet. And it does not like three bet. That's interesting. And I imagine it doesn't like the three bet because the initial raisers coming from too early of a spot. It says your opponent showed quite a bit of strength by raising from middle position. For bluffing, you should choose hands with good potential if the raise is called. So I should have folded. Maybe that's because we're out of position. So maybe it does not like three betting with blockers here because it thinks I'm going to get called a lot of the time. That makes sense. Here I peeled and defended. As you see, it lost two cents. Here we three bet again. So it doesn't... Also against a player in a steal position, you shouldn't bluff with any hand. Wait, what? Also against a player in steal position, you shouldn't bluff with any hand. I don't understand that. You still should have a hand that has a good potential if the raise is called. I should have folded. Okay. I would like to know... I would like to know here which hands I should be three betting. I don't know if there's a way for me to see this. Oh, preflop advice. Let's see. Well, here it is. So I right click and it brings up this. So it's saying I should be three betting the ace X suited some percentage of the time, middle pairs, and these big suited cards. So not ace X off suited. It does not like three betting with these ace X off suit hands. So it much prefers the marginal suited hands, I guess, because it thinks I'm going to get called a lot. So that's interesting. Again, limping strategy. So that's just fold queen eight from the button, which is fine. Same thing here, full, uh, raising a hand that's a bit too weak. And here I elected to three bet. I didn't really know what the right play was here in this spot. I elected to three bet the pocket sixes, mainly because I think I wanted to have primarily a three bet or fold range from the small blind. And as you see, it actually suggests calling with stuff like king nine suited, jack nine suited, etc. So that's that's interesting to me. All right, so let's go back to stats. Let's take a look. I guess I should have clicked on all the blunder or all the mistakes. See the flop mistakes here. We were in the small blind limping spot. Maybe maybe it just does not like my strategy of this limping limping and then limpery raising range with some garbage. It says I should just check here. That seems fine. All right, what happened here? Pre flop, I raised this guy three bet. I called flop comes this. He checked. It's saying I should be betting. Notice the EV of betting and the EV of checking are almost the same. It likes a small bet. So six bucks here, and I think that would be fine. I have no problem with that. As you see, if the options are to bet bigger, uh, checking becomes better. So that's interesting. Oops. Here, again, limping strategy. Here, again, limping strategy. All right. Here, this guy raised, I believe I three bet, he called. Flop comes this. I bet $8, so I bet small, and it's saying I should check. Notice the EV of all of these bets are very similar, 34 and change, whatever that means. So as you see, I it does not like big bets here. Actually, kind of interesting, it likes 2x pot, but it does not like pot. So I think if you are going to be betting, it needs to be a reasonable bet, and perhaps my small bet was not ideal. Looks like my small bet was one of the worst plays, but as you see, the plays are all very close. As long as you're not making blunders, I think it's usually okay. Wow, okay, so here I raised with queen eight, big blind defended, and he led into me on the flop, and I just folded. And it actually says folding is quite bad. It says I should be calling or raising the vast majority of the time, and I guess that's because I'm in position with a backdoor gut shot and overcards. So I maybe gave up a little bit too weakly here. As you see, it just never suggests folding. So that's interesting. Maybe I fold to the leads a little bit too often, but then again, I did not see the leads ever, so. Let's see hand range here. So it's saying the opponent's going to be betting with straights, three of a kind, one pair, and high cards every time with high cards. So basically it's saying that whenever this opponent's leading, he has almost all bluffs. So he has almost all bluffs, and of course I should, I should be sticking around. Does that make sense? Wow. Okay, so here I raised... Big blind, three bet, I called. Flop comes nine, eight, two. It bet, I just called. And as you see, it doesn't like calling here. It just suggests folding. Seems a little bit tight to me. I guess it thinks I'm going to be getting barreled a lot. And if you're going to be getting barreled a lot, then you can't really continue too well. All right, so here's a hand where under the gun raise, I called. Flop comes, I checked, he bet, I called. Terms of the jack, I checked, he bet, and I decided to raise. 
Notice here that raising and calling are pretty close in EV. As you raise bigger, it becomes worse. So you want to be raising kind of small, which is what I did. I think I made it, oh, I raised to 18 actually. So I did raise kind of big. I suppose I should have made it even smaller. That makes sense. A lot of stuff makes sense. You just have to figure out ways to, oops, you just have to figure out ways to implement these things, which is never that easy. So here I barreled off in the spot. I limp small blind, opponent checked. I bet flop, bet turn, bet river. And notice here I did pot it, so it actually thinks this is an okay potting hand as a bluff. I notice the difference is relatively small. And here's the exact same spot. Um, small blind limped. I checked. Actually, let's re let's can I replay this? Let's see. Small blind limps. I checked. Flop games. He checked. I bet he called. Turn. He checked. I bet he called. Interesting. It's fine with those plays. Um, river. He checked, I potted it, he folded. And as you see, these bets both return some small amount, so neither is that particularly bad. All right, so all in all, I think we're happy with our play. It says we played at a world-class level. That's good. If you can play at a world-class level every time, we'll be pretty happy. Um, says I played more hands than the bot did, and I was more aggressive than the bot was, but I think that's okay. So 30 slash 20, if I was playing 30 slash 20 in a, full, in a regular game, I'd say it's a little bit too loose. But I think over this sample, we actually had pretty good hands. So I think we kind of got hit by the deck there. Balance, eh, I don't know. Anyway, good session. If you guys enjoyed watching this session, I suggest you give the program a try yourself. You can get a completely free trial at jlpoker.com slash pokersnowy. Uh, give it a try and let me know how you do. I, I think this is a great app that will teach you, or a great program that will teach you how to play a fundamentally sound strategy, which is where you should usually be whenever the games are tough, and then once the games get softer, you can then deviate. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.